The Honourable Member for Mississauga, Erindale. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, uh, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak on Budget C-50. Uh, I'm going to dedicate most of my comments today to uh, address the issue of the so-called immigration reforms or changes that the Conservative government is proposing within them. Mr. Speaker, you know, first we have to ask ourselves a question. Why are the Conservatives introducing immigration changes or amendment to the Immigration Act within a budget? We all know, I mean, it's not, it's not, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that this is not a budgetary matter. This is a, this is a policy matter. It requires to be introduced as a separate bill where policies could be discussed extensively, where the Committee on Citizenship and Immigration can complete its study and examination of those proposals and offer its opinion and then vote it upon. But the Conservatives have chosen to, you know, under the cloak of uh, $20 million, introduce it within the budget bill. And many Canadians are asking, why? Why are immigration changes introduced to the budget? And that's a very good question. We need, we need to have a real answer and an honest answer for that question. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that the Conservatives have been misleading Canadians and making things up about these changes because they're unable to explain what the purpose of these changes are. They claim that these changes will help reduce the backlog, the backlog that is around 900,000 applications by now, Mr. Speaker. But if you actually read the changes, the proposals, they say that these changes will not take effect until February of 2008. So that's one point, Mr. Speaker. These reforms are not going to address the 900,000 applications that are already in the backlog. The 900,000 applications that are already in the backlog will still have to be dealt with using the existing rules. Number one. Number two, they claim that they're not going to limit, not going to use this power to limit the number of applications received by the government. While it gives the minister that power, by the way, Mr. Speaker, but how can they round that circle when they say that we're going to expedite economic immigrants, but you know what? We're not going to slow down family unification. And by the way, we're going to cut back backlog. And by the way, we're going to be transparent. And by the way, we're going to do everything by the book. But it is important that we give the minister discretionary power, unchecked power, to implement these changes. The fact of the matter is if they try to expedite economic immigrants and keep the number, the target of immigrants the same, this will happen on the expense of, on the backs of family reunification, Mr. Speaker. And that is of concern to many Canadians. Many Canadians are keen on making uh, that we, may, we attract economic immigrants that address our economic needs. Nobody is arguing against that. Also, nobody is arguing that immigration uh, system needs reform. Nobody is arguing against that, Mr. Speaker. But to introduce, the, to assume that the only way to fix these issues is by giving the Minister of Immigration, regardless of who the Minister is, regardless of which party is in power, Mr. Speaker, is a short-sighted offer or solution. It will not help. In fact, it will only introduce powers where a lot of questions can be asked when they're applied. What needs to happen, Mr. Speaker, is that we need to fix the immigration system in a systemic way, in a comprehensive way. We need to see where the issues are. We need to apply more resources. We need to be wise and thoughtful about how and when we process our immigration applications. So, Mr. Speaker, this disingenuous proposal that by giving the minister discretionary power, unchecked discretionary power, that we can solve the backlog problem does not stand up to scrutiny. 